Hello everybody, I'm going to be talking about how to schedule and slice your data using Azure Data Factor today. So the, the whole paradigm of scheduling is done through SQL agents in the SQL world. Yet in the Azure Data Factor world you have so SQL agent you have two paradigms. One of them is the scheduling and the other one is the, the slicing. So the scheduling is you can think about it like uh, it's an on-off switch. You say, hey, my particular pipeline, this whole thing is a pipeline, is going to be available between this state and this state. That's about it. It doesn't tell you that it's going to run. It's not going to tell you that it's going to do something about it, but it's just saying this is going to be available for this period of time. I think you can make this one even infinite uh, by not defining the end time. I haven't tried it, but uh, as far as I remember correctly, that was the case. So, this is how scheduling works. Um, this is the, the easiest portion. Now, I'm jumping into the slicing portion. Now, the slicers are basically uh, the frequency of the pipeline that's going to run. How frequently do you want to run this pipeline? And you can define it in your JSON script while defining your, your uh, tables and your pipeline. Um, and they can have different uh, schedules or def they can have different frequencies so um, I'll come to that point pretty soon but here's how you define it, you say frequency equals day or not equals in JSON format key value pairs, frequency, day and then interval if you, by default it's one, if you want you can increase it and hence this they becomes your slicer, so this is one slice of data. This will be the demo set that I'm going to be using today, and here you see Microsoft stock starting from 2015-02-06, and it's open price, high price, low price, close price, volume, and adjusted volume. This is my data set that's residing on my uh, blob store at this point. Now, let's go deeper into slicers. Uh, here comes our uh, three components of a pipeline. My input data set, my pipeline, my output data set or table. Now um, you can define your your frequencies in each and every uh, all these three components or use the frequencies on the old three components but only the output one is going to define how frequently actually this table is going to run. There is an exception though to this particular rule. Even if you define the output to run, let's say every hour or every day, if your input is not available for that slicer, then it's going to stuck and wait. Hence, this is the paradigm. For instance, in 2A 2015, my slicer is not available, so my input data is not available. Hence, I cannot process that data for 2A 2015 until this becomes available and becomes ready. So this is a really important concept. So I'm repeating again, the output slicer defines the, the frequency, but the input should be available in order to run it. So if you see lots of pending executions in your output slicers monitoring pane, then that means the, the input is not available and it's just waiting out there. It's not going to run, even though you passed due. Now I'm going to talk about the demonstration. I have 15 years of MSFD data, stock price data, and what I would like to do is I would like to calculate monthly averages. In other words, um, this month is February, February 12th, and what I would like to do is day by day basis calculate the monthly average of uh, MSFD stock. Of course, we already passed January, hence the January data will all, always be there, and it's not going to be. Uh, it's not going. Uh, it's not going to change. It's going to be static, but the February data is going to change. So the steps involved in order to make this happen. Um, these are the steps. You create uh, your um, your files, put them into a blob, and then you define your Azure Data Factory. It's by defining your link services, you say, hey, here's my link service to access to the blob storage, and then you use those. 
and define your store uh, source and destination data sets. These are my source and destinations. You define a high activity inside of your pipeline and you define your schedule and that's about it. Now let's take a look at the data. I'm going to show it through Azure uh, Data Explorer as well, but this is how it looks like. I have a, a virtual directory called stock and it's an incremental um, data and a virtual directory and here I partition the data based on year and months. And here you see these these values, these are weekly values, hence each and every one of them has got five data points because um, stock market is open only Monday through Friday, hence you just have five data points. So having said that, now let's take a look at uh, my data, how it looks like. Um, so this is my data, how it looks like, and if I want to show it to you, just really quick, this is it. So apparently uh, there were a couple days that were coming from uh, the previous month, that's why I have just three, but if I open up this one, I, will, I bet I'm going to have five. Yes, I have five. So I have a bunch of these. I have, I think, starting from 2000. So what I'm going to do is I want to run my slicers, and I have already pre-populated them for you, uh, based on certain days. Like here, I run them for 211, 210, 29, 28, 27, 26. 26 is not available, for instance. Why it's not available? It is because this particular thing is not available for 2.6. So, how am I going to, and if you click on it, you are going to see the, um, the retries, and if you click on the message, then it's going to tell you exactly what happened. It says, hey, this particular thing does not exist, even though right now it's, it's existing. While I was preparing the data set, it was not existing, and I was executing it. So now let's retry. It's done by right clicking on this particular run icon and click run. You are going to see that automatically this is going to say succeeded. Hence this is going to change to succeeded. Uh, yep, it changed. Like here. And now what is happening behind the scenes is this became pending execution. This particular execution is going to take about four minutes. Even though it's a small data set, it takes a little bit of time to go through the uh, HD insight. While it is cooking, right now it's cooking, it's saying configuring and blah, blah, blah. I am going to show you how the data looks like or how my um, scripts looks like. So this is my HD insight uh, PowerShell. Not, uh, not HD inside, but my PowerShell, my power, main PowerShell that I define. So I go through the same mumbo jumbo over and over again. Here I create my HD inside cluster. Here I create my data factory, and all these are based on these particular values at the top. And then I start to do my link services, my two link services, and then I define my um, the row table and then the output table. And finally, I define my pipeline, the in-between uh, the output tables. And the last step is to define the, um, the schedule that this particular thing is going to be active. So this is going to be active between 2015-01-31 and 2015-01-12. Now let's take a look at uh, our uh, link services. This is my HR Blob Store link service. Here I'm just hiding my account name and account key. That's why they're XXX. Now here's my HD Insights uh, link service. It is, uh, it's not on demand. It is uh, static HD Insights. So uh, I have username, password, and everything. And I am going to be showing you my Hive query, which is, or let's, let me show you my uh, table definitions and then we will go. This is my input table definition. Uh, table blob stock and then it has got I think six different columns. Date, open, high, low or seven. Clause, volume, adjusted volume. And here I define my partition. Or um, in this particular um, attribute I define where the data is located. At. It is going to be located at this particular demo container. Uh, right here it's my demo container. 
and stock incremental data are the virtual directories and the data is partitioned since it's partitioned by year and months this is how you define it. Once you define these parameters, these are actually placeholder for parameters, you have to define those parameters inside of your JSON script and this is how you define it. You say take the slicer data and start date and format it with yyyy which is um, take the date and time and just get the, the year value. I do the same thing for the month and I got mm because I wanted to get the uh, number of months so uh, it, it turns out to be 0 to 4 February. Um, this is how I define my uh, input table. Let's take a look at my output table. Output table is going to be named table blob output stock. It, it will have two, two rows or two columns, uh, the months and the average. Um, and then it's going to be located. I think um, it's going to be located at Azure Blob location. Um, the demo is going to be the containers. Stack process is going to be the um, the place that it's going to use as the virtual directory, and it's going to be partitioned by the year. And it will take the partition by the year value from the slicer start. Again, the same uh, trick that I'm pulling. Now this is the output table. Now let's take a look at uh, my pipeline in between the pipeline. So it is running a, a Hive query. It's going to use the HD Insight activity type. This is the input table, this is the output table, this is the service link, the link service uh, name that it will use. And here's my Hive and here are the, the f I'm telling where to find it. At this point I need to define this one until HD, uh, not HD inside ADF becomes a little bit more native to um, Hive. And here's my output where it's located at. Now here I define my two parameters. I say slicer year, slicer month, and I do the same trick. This is how I get the, the values of the slicer data. And here's my uh, particular Hive query that I'm interested in. Now take, let's take a look at the Hive query. In order to make the subdirectories trick work, and I'm using external partitioning and uh, dynamic partitioning, external table dynamic partitioning, so you need to set these four uh, variables to true, and once you set them, it becomes really easy. So I have the data, and if it exists, the, the name of the table is stock. If it exists, just drop it, don't worry about it, and I create it using partitions by years and months and it's a uh, it's a delimited file and um, with pi um, comma delimited and the location is this particular location so here comes the the input parameter from my pipeline becomes important it is going to check the my hive uh, application is going to check par for this particular directory so and it since it's external it's not going to create another uh repository in high warehouse directory so i want it to run it faster here i need to reset the partitions uh, add them uh, so that it works faster uh, here i define my output table and my output table has got three columns on uh, the month year and average again they are partitioned by year and month and here I define the the main select query. I'm saying select from months and years, average close, year date, month date. The last two are going to be used at the partition while partitioning the data. And then I'm saying, hey, go and take not everything, but be intelligent about it and the, the slicers that I'm interested in do not process everything out there because I have lots of data and then group it. That's about it and let's take a look how it looks like. It seems like it just completed. Yes, it just completed. So if we come to our um, storage explorer and let's take a look at it, refresh the data so that I have the most refreshed data and I'll check it, check the data by last modified date and we should see right here our data. Uh, this is newly created, just 
since everything is based on some kind of a UTC, um, my date is off, but as you can see it's 5.41 and it took just 9.45 p.m. over here. So if you want to see the data, you just double click on the, the file that has got the data, which is the innermost one, and you can see that it has got the data by just looking at uh, the size of it, the length of it. And we double click on it, content, top 10, here's my file, it has got the, the month, uh, February 2015 and this was the average for that. If you want to double check this data, how you can do it is you can take a look at uh, the... Um, I'm not going to go through but you can take a look at uh, the actual data and you can figure out from there. Anyway, so this was my presentation in regards to the, the slicers and the scheduling of uh, ADF. It is really powerful, yet you need to understand the fact that everything becomes eventually consistent. Hence, let's say I have 10 of these pipelines and they can have all different type of scheduling. Even inside of the pipeline I can have, this can be running every day, yet this can be running just once a month. So I can have different frequencies. Just keep that in mind, or this can have, let's say, every, uh, every every hour, this can run just once in a day. So keep that in mind, and just be aware of those, and I will come up with new demonstrations for you. Bye-bye. If you have questions or comments, feel free to write it at cemd at abacustms.com, or just feel free to email me or write a comment below. Thank you. Bye-bye.